Step 4. Truss Brace Assembly If your building is less than 20 feet wide, and assuming you're not in an area with excessive snow loads, you're probably not going to have truss braces. With few exceptions, our 20-foot wide structures will require truss bracing, and any buildings wider than 20 feet will require truss braces. Absolute Steel buildings have three different styles of trusses based on the different loads that must be achieved for various parts of the country. For this demonstration, we're installing our tri-truss braces as they're the most frequently used. Again, consult your assembly manual for the type of truss your building has. The primary center collar tie tube on this building has an overall length of 31 and a half inches and is a two inch by two inch tube with reduced ends. Center collar tie tubes can vary in length and size depending upon the size of your building. For example, a 40 foot wide building in a snow load area uses a 144 inch length of two inch by three inch tube. Again, always consult the assembly instructions that are included in your kit. Next, slip one of the 91 and an eighth inch end collar tie pieces on each end of the center collar tie and make sure the assembly is straight. Fasten the joints with the tech or frame screws. and attach a left and right collar tie bracket flush with the ends of the collar tie assembly. Right now, we want you to position the collar tie assembly between the side bends. The collar tie must be centered in the frame. Use the joined connection between the rafter and the side bend as a reference point. The measurement from the joined connection to the end of the collar tie assembly should be equal on both sides. Fasten each collar tie bracket to the roof wall assembly with 12 frame screws. Next, we need to mark the center of the peak from joined connection to the center of the peak. This is where one of those Sharpie pens or something else that puts a mark on steel that won't come off comes in real handy. Now, mark the center of the collar tie assembly. On this building, the center would be 102 and 7 eighths inches. These will be reference points we'll use in just a minute or two. Use a BK20 or flat bracket to affix the center brace to the peak. Place the vertical center brace in the frame between the peak and the collar tie. Use your reference marks as a guide. Make sure the assembly is straight before you fasten the screws after putting the first screw in. Leave the end which meets the collar tie assembly alone. We'll get to that in a minute. 
Using the center mark on the collar tie assembly, center the 4 inch by 6 inch flat bracket onto the collar tie assembly, keeping it flush with the bottom of the collar tie assembly, and fasten with two frame screws. Now you can affix the center brace using frame screws placed through the 4 inch by 6 inch bracket and complete the installation by fastening the remaining screws. The two diagonal brace pieces are now centered on each rafter with the other end abutting where the center brace meets the collar tie assembly. Use the BK20 flat brackets to affix to the middle of the rafters and slip the other ends into the 4 inch by 6 inch flat bracket that you put on the collar tie assembly and secure them with frame screws. The only place brackets are used on both sides front and back of the roof wall assembly is at the peak to vertical connection. We've now got the first wall and roof assembly completed along with its truss brace assembly. So we're going to proceed with making all of them for this building kit, leaving the first and last one without truss bracing for the reasons I just explained. 